So this is a brief video review on the Lenovo ThinkPad T450S laptop for use in 2023 and onward. So let's get right to the hardware. This has an Intel Core i5-5300U CPU at 2.30 gigahertz, uh, two core four thread, and we have eight gigabytes of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM, a 256 gigabyte Samsung PM871 solid state drive, running Windows 10 Pro 64-bit. For Wi-Fi, we have an Intel dual band wireless AC7265 card. And for graphics, we're running with the integrated Intel HD Graphics 5500. With this order, I got a nice little treat of not getting the usual 1366 by 768 resolution. Rather, this came at a 16 by 9 resolution, which is 1600 by 900. And one other was 1080p, but we're gonna focus on the 1600 by 900 middle ground because we're still working within the budget realm. And well, uh, that's the kind of display panels that you get. So we have the usual chiclet style six row spill resistant keyboard. And this one actually does have the backlit option, which is very nice. Of course, the characteristic red track point, should you choose to use it. And what I really enjoy, which is the three point touchpad. And there is a fingerprint reader should you choose to use it. I still have yet to do that myself, but it is of course an option. On the right I.O. of the laptop, we have microphone and headphone input, a SIM card reader, USB 3.0, RJ45 Ethernet port, and a VGA port, and the version of the Kensington lock. On the left I.O. we have the optional smart card reader, USB 3.0 always on for charging devices like your, say your cell phone when the laptop is in sleep mode. A mini display port. There is an exhaust for the CPU fan. And another USB 3.0 and the input for the power adapter. And the top of the display panel which is made out of carbon fiber and reinforced plastic. Uh, it's in pretty good condition as well. Um, and the materials also make for a durable laptop. On to the bottom of the case, we have the external battery and there's an input for a uh, docking bay and some nice grills for uh, passive air cooling. And the bottom material is magnesium and aluminum, making it very durable, I'd say. Now, another option for a docking station would be a USB powered one. And here I have one connected to my workstation that offers USB 3.0 and headphone and microphone input, as well as an extra VGA and DVI display. So as for how this laptop performs with the i5, with the fifth generation i5 and the eight gigabytes of RAM, um, it's a pretty snappy experience and you can get to looking up pictures quite fast. The, as long as you have a solid internet connection, uh, there should be no real interruptions and of course you can watch videos with relative ease and high definition. And this time around the stock speakers on the T450S are actually pretty good. But of course you can always pair a Bluetooth speaker for better sound. There's the standard 720p webcam. A uh, little less latency with this one. I would consider the T450S a pretty good solution for some light video editing as well. Uh, for what I do, I could definitely edit 1080p video with relative ease using the Movavi software that I do use. All right, now let's take a look at the inside of the case. And first we'll take off the external battery. And now to remove the back panel, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver and we'll start by removing all the screws, which should be secured in by washers, so don't be surprised if they don't come out. Now you can use something like a plastic guitar pick or, or the thin plastic uh, guitar pick-like thing from the iFixit kit to score around the edge of the case and remove the back panel. Uh, so you'll have to excuse the lighting, my ring light is broken and we're relying on the remaining overcast daylight to light up this video portion. So um, here we have the internal battery and if you ever want to service the laptop it's a good idea to unplug it from the motherboard right here. Here we have the 2.5 inch solid state drive or hard drive bay. 
Over here we have the one single RAM stick that you can install. Um, to my knowledge, you can install up to 12 gigabytes of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM. Uh, four gigabytes is soldered to the motherboard, so you could also run with just that if you need to. And here is the CPU cooler and right here the fan and the heat pipe. Uh, you can easily remove these four screws if you wanted to um, apply new thermal paste. Over here we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card and an optional expansion right here for an M.2 solid state drive or a WWAN card. Alright, so now we should check out some games. Okay, so we have Fortnite running and the settings are at the lower graphical fidelity, of course, and a mixture of, I'd say, medium to low. And we'll see what kind of performance we get. All right, so right now we're averaging around 30 frames per second, uh, 40 frames per second. Just sitting here, uh, I did get one kill right here. Uh, I wasn't recording at the moment, but I was able to uh, move around with some relative ease, a little bit of stuttering, but still able to get the job done. So we'll see how well this goes without having to adjust the settings too much. All right, so in these settings, I'm averaging still around 30 frames per second, 40 frames per second, dripping up and down a little bit. Oh, somebody's trying to get me. All right, so on those settings, I was averaging around 30 frames per second uh, with slight dips and slight improvements in performance. Um, for a guy like me, that's okay. Um, that would make the game playable. For anybody more competitive, of course, that's not really quite making the cut. But yeah, I personally would mark it off as playable. All right, so we have Steam loaded up and we're gonna test a game that's a little more applicable to the system like Left 4 Dead 2. So we'll go with what the settings defaulted to and here we have a window, it's 1600 by 900 and a mixture of, I would say a good mix of medium uh, to slightly upper medium settings. So let's see how well this performs. So just sitting idle, we're running around 50, 55 to 60 frames per second. Uh, let's see what happens once a little more action happens on screen. The gameplay is actually really smooth. Okay, we're not exactly facing a horde here, so let's hop down and see what happens. Alright, so overall we're averaging right around 60 to 70 frames per second. Uh, some, it just went up to 80. So that is pretty much making totally, if not ideally, playable. So we'll mark Left 4 Dead 2 definitely on the playable list. All right, so here we have Tomb Raider 2013 lined up and I put the graphics to a mixture of low settings. All right, so right now we're hovering around 30 frames per second. And the reason why I choose this level is because there's quite a bit going on. And in my mind, this is a good like stress test for playing Tomb Raider. Let's see what happens on screen and we'll see what it looks like in combat. Okay, so right now we're looking at more like mid 20s frames per second. All right, so now we're at the cutscene and I just wanna make note that even if the frames per second do dip down to the mid 20s, it doesn't make the game unplayable. Uh, just something to keep in mind. We're not experiencing any stutters or a lot of like screen tears. And a game like this is going to be well optimized to play on a variety of different systems from high to low end. All right, so combat is totally fine. We're still uh, hovering around like the mid to late 20s to up to 30 frames per second. And as I stated before, that makes it totally playable for a guy like me. All right, so just like in the other ThinkPad videos of this generation that I've showcased, um, we're gonna play some Dark Forces just to demonstrate that you can play a variety of different games. It doesn't have to be higher end. All right, so a game like this is, of course, totally playable. It's a really good game, good experience. Looks pretty fresh and crisp on this display. I mean, there's so many different games of this style that you can run. And I was looking in my Steam library, and there's actually a lot of games that I can play on this laptop, like Half-Life, Half-Life 2, uh, probably Counter-Strike, and a whole variety of other games. So I just pulled this one out, and if you've seen any of my videos, of course, I've played it many times before. 
All right, so would I recommend the Lenovo ThinkPad T450s for use in 2023 and onward? Um, of course, that's really going to depend on what you want to use the laptop for. It's not a high-end gaming machine and it's not a high-end workstation. However, it does cover all of the general tasks that I do personally at work and at home quite easily. I could definitely see using this as a daily driver. It has all the general characteristics of the ThinkPad that I've come to, come to enjoy over the years. Though there isn't a clear upgrade path for Windows 11 being a fifth generation Intel CPU, you could of course run Windows 11 easily or just run Linux like many ThinkPad users like to do. For now, this will remain with Windows 10 Pro 64-bit and it will go up for sale as is and hopefully somebody will get really good use out of it. So uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you feel like I missed anything, feel free to add that. Let me know what you use a T450S or what you want to use it for and we'll help decide if it's the right fit for you. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.